Good morning everybody and welcome to our online service of worship. We pray and trust that you will feel the presence of God as we worship together in our respective homes today. The service is broadcast from St Patrick's Church in Armoy. It's part of a group of parishes which also um, comprise of Drumtulla Church and All Saints in Loch Giel. A little later on in our service we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 11 which is the story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and we're going to be examining how Jesus was welcomed that day. Our worship this morning follows the Book of Common Prayers morning prayer. Although we're going to put everything up on the screen, if you prefer to follow it from your prayer book, then you will find the start of the service on page 101. And so we begin with some words of scripture taken from Psalm number 92, which remind us that when we approach God, we should approach him with, not only with reverence, but with thanksgiving in our hearts. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. So we welcome each other in God's name. Welcome in the name of Christ, God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And we remind ourselves of why we gather to worship. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to be forgiven, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of the Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. So Heavenly Father, as the people spread their coats and palm branches on the ground to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem, so we welcome you into our lives this morning. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise and inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing the first of two hymns this morning, and it is indeed a, a hymn of praise and thanksgiving to God. Praise is rising. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you We turn to you Hope is stirring Hearts are yearning for you We long for you Cause when we see Find strength to face the day In your presence all our fears are washed away Washed away Hosanna Hosanna You are the God who saves us
So it's something that we should all do on a regular basis. We're going to put some words of a confession up on the screen, but before we say those together, let's just take a moment of stillness, each of us in the presence of God, recollecting those things that we most especially need to say sorry to him for right now. We say together, O God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments. We have often been selfish and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his, in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
The Lord's name be praised. We're going to use some words of praise that we find in Psalm 118. And we're going to put these words on the screen and we'll say them together. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we will bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession, up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so, as I said at the beginning of the service, we're going to look at the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So we read from Mark chapter 11, from verse 1. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a coat tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the coat? They told him what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut down in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Almighty God, we join the unceasing praise of heaven as we proclaim you King. Thank you that you have written your word, that we may hear it. So having heard it, now write it upon our hearts. Help us to understand what it means. Show us how we can best apply it to our lives. And as we leave here a little later on, as we go back into the world from our living rooms and from this church building, help us to apply it in a way that gives honour and glory to you in all things. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Well, it's Palm Sunday, as you probably know already. And I always love Palm Sunday because it's, it's a really happy celebration and it sort of transports us back to Jerusalem to be part of that huge crowd of people that had come to 
the Passover festival and especially in this moment to celebrate the arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem. It was a really special moment in time. Word on the street was that Jesus had recently raised a man called Lazarus from the dead and they wanted to see this man for themselves, to see the man who could raise somebody else from the dead. And they were thinking, the only person capable of raising somebody else from the dead has got to be the Messiah. So, so maybe this Jesus is the Messiah. We, we need to get a glimpse of, of this Jesus. And so Luke tells us that as Jesus enters into Jerusalem, the people begin rejoicing and praising God loudly and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We know the words so well. They are part of the Hebrew scripture. They come to us from Psalm 118. And it's a psalm of rejoicing, rejoicing specifically over God's triumph. And I think that without doubt, the people in this large, excited crowd that lined the, the way into Jerusalem as Jesus made his way there on a the donkey would have been thinking about these words. And they were using these words to make a declaration. They were using these words to proclaim that this man, Jesus, who had raised another man called Lazarus from the dead, must be the Messiah. And that, of course, is why the Pharisees are, are rounding on Jesus. They're looking at Jesus and saying, Look, can't you see what's going on here? Can you not hear what the people are saying about you? They think you're the Messiah. They think that you're the Saviour, the one that's come to save them. Now put an end to this nonsense. Tell them to shut up. Tell them to go away. Tell them, to, tell them that you're not the Messiah. But, of course, Jesus doesn't stop them. He doesn't tell them to be quiet or to go away. He simply says, look, if I tell the people to stop shouting these praises, even the very rocks and the, and the hills around the city would cry out and testify to that fact. Because of course Jesus is the Messiah and he has come to Jerusalem to die on a cross and to save his people. And Jesus was very clearly saying to the crowd and to every one of us, I am your king. And here's the thing about this message. It still stands. Jesus still says, I am your king. Or perhaps I should say, it still stands for now. Now, in case that sounds a little strange, let me try and explain what I mean. Right now, we are living in a time of grace. And Jesus' kingship is creating a season of salvation in world history, during which time you and I, anybody, can be saved from the wrath and the judgment of God. There is still time to bow the knee before the King, and receive Christ Jesus as our Lord and Saviour and swear allegiance to him. There is still time. It is a day of grace. And that season has lasted for around about 2,000 years. Now, you may think that that sounds like a long time, but let's give it some perspective. So long, in fact, that you feel it's, it's maybe a permanent state of affairs. But first of all, Put 2,000 years beside eternity and it is the briefest of moments. Those 2,000 years are nothing more than a, a blink of an eye. And secondly, we need to remember that this is not a permanent situation. It is not a, a permanent state of affairs. This is not going to last indefinitely. The day is going to come, and perhaps quite soon, but nobody really knows, when the kingship of Jesus is going to be a whole lot different. Now what do we mean by a whole lot different? Well we get a little glimpse of what that difference means when we read from the book of Revelation and 
from chapter 19. So let me read a few verses, several verses in fact from you, that gives us a graphic picture how Jesus the King will appear when he comes again someday. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written on him, which no one knows except him. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he may strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of God, the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Well, that's a very different description from the king that we see riding on a donkey into the streets of Jerusalem in our reading this morning. The king who will shortly be stripped, flogged, nailed to a cross. When the king of Revelation turns up, as he will, for when did God never keep his promises? It will be a different king. Well, the same king, but exhibiting different characteristics. And at that point, it will be too late to switch sides. And so what Jesus is saying is that for now, he is meek and lonely. He is welcoming, he is seeking, he is forgiving, he is patient, he shows grace and mercy. And in a few days, he's going to go willingly and shed his blood on a cross to save all who accept his free gift of life. And until he comes again, this is the wonder of his kingship. It saves sinners. But one day, the Bible tells us that this same king is going to swap his donkey for a war horse. He's going to swap his tears of sorrow as he wept over Jerusalem for eyes of flaming fire. His crown of thorns is going to be replaced with a royal diadem. The plaque that had been written sarcastically above his cross, which said the king of the Jews, is going to be replaced and written on his robes and on his thigh will be the words, King of kings and Lord of lords. But until he comes again, there is this moment of amnesty hanging in history when he continues to exercise patience and mercy and offer forgiveness and reconciliation with God. For now Jesus still rides on a donkey, and not yet a war horse with a rod of iron. And he is, he is ready to save all who will receive him as Saviour, as King. So join the crowds who throughout all of history have shouted with, enthusiast, with enthusiasm, Hosanna! Hosanna! Shout Hosanna to Jesus this morning. It simply means, Lord, save me. Come to Jesus. Know him. Receive him. Live your life in allegiance to him. Amen. We're going to put the words of the Apostles' Creed up on the screen if you would prefer to follow it in the book. It's on page 112. It's a summary of all the things that we believe. And to encourage one another, we'll say it out loud. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We pray as Jesus taught us, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. <clears throat> Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collects of Pam Sunday. God of all, you gave your only begotten Son to take the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross. Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that, sharing in his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, <clears throat> that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, on this Palm Sunday, we rejoice that we have a King who reigns forever. Jesus, our friend, our Saviour, our Master. <clears throat> and so, Lord, we invite you to reign over us, over every aspect of our lives, that you would be the Lord of our thoughts, the Lord of our action, the Lord of our hearts, the Lord of all that we think, and do, and say, and have. So help us as we journey towards Easter, not to forget what it cost you, the sacrifice that you made, the pain that you experienced, the price that you paid, for you have shown us the greatest mercy possible, the deepest compassion ever, the strongest love. You gave everything to us, you held nothing back. Help us to give back to you every day. Help us to love you with all our heart and soul and mind and strength. Help us to proclaim you as King over all the earth by showing others that you are king over our lives. We pray for those around us who do not proclaim you as king, for those who are lost and don't know where to turn to find you, 
for those who are caught up with the world and can't see their need for you. For those who know of you but are afraid to confess you. Afraid of what others might think or do or say. Father, you have opened the gate of glory to all who will come in. And so we pray that you will open the hearts and minds of the people for whom we pray now. The people in our families, our neighbours, our friends. The people of our communities, our towns and villages and cities. So that they can see you, the King that rode into Jerusalem and went to a cross for them. That they too would come to shout Hosanna and welcome you as their Saviour and Lord. And we pray for those around us who are struggling this week. For those who endure pain. And those who know grief. For those who are frustrated with their circumstances. In the quietness of our hearts we name those known to us. And we pray that you will raise them up and strengthen them to meet the demands that each day brings forth. And finally, we pray for those around us, those sitting beside us in our homes, those who live in our hearts. Lord, bless them and keep them. Make your face shine upon them and be gracious to them. Lift up the light of your countenance upon them and give them your peace now and always. Amen. And we join together in the words of the first collect as we pray that God would protect and care for us. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for ourselves and for one another using the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. And so to our second and final hymn on this Palm Sunday, All Glory, Lord and Honour.
darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy. Help us, Heavenly Father, to trust you, to trust your love, to serve your purposes, to keep praising your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen.